Singletons. Useful? Convenient? Controversial? Even if you're new to Unity, you've probably already heard about singletons, how they can be useful, but that you should also never use them, and that if you do, your game will be difficult to manage as it gets bigger. While there are good arguments for not using singletons, they can also be extremely useful for connecting scripts together, especially as a beginner. So what's the real deal with singletons? Are they helpful or are they harmful? And is it okay to use one in your project? In this video, you'll learn how singletons in Unity work, what they're good for, and the risks of using them the wrong way, so that you can decide for yourself if they're right for your project. So what is a singleton? A singleton is a globally accessible class that exists as an instance in the scene, but only once. The idea is that any other script can access a singleton using a static reference to an instance of that type. What this does is allow you to easily connect other objects to important parts of the game, such as to the player, or to global systems, such as a game manager, without having to find them in the scene or to otherwise interact with them first. This is what makes a singleton globally accessible. The class that's in the scene basically holds a static reference to itself. Static variables are shared by all instances of a class, meaning that any other script can access that reference directly using the class name without needing to get a reference to a specific instance of that class first. Because any script can access it, it's usually a good idea to protect the reference with a private set property, meaning that it can only be set from inside the class it's declared in. Then, the singleton can set itself as the static reference, creating a local class that exists and works in the scene, but that can easily be accessed by other scripts. However, while the reference to the singleton is static, meaning that all versions of it will hold the same data, the class is not, meaning that it's possible for multiple instances of a singleton to exist. Which is why it's important to make sure that there is only ever one instance of a singleton in your scene, by checking to see if the current static reference, if there is one, matches the instance that's checking it. If it doesn't, the script knows it's a duplicate and it can delete itself. These are the two basic requirements of a singleton, a globally accessible class, but with only one instance. But why use one? And what are they good for? The point of a singleton is to create a global reference to a local script, to give everything in the game easy access to something that needs to exist in the scene, such as the player or a game manager, for example, which can be very convenient, but, while singletons can be easy to use, they can also cause problems. So what are the drawbacks? Singletons can make a project more difficult to manage as it gets bigger. This is typically because references to a singleton are hard-coded into every script that uses them. Meaning that if you want to change how a singleton works, you need to change everything that accesses it too. For example, a global system, such as a game manager or audio system, is generally a good use case for a singleton since there will typically only ever be one of them, and many different scripts will likely need to access it. However, while an audio manager singleton could make it easy for any other script to play a sound effect, if you later decide that you want to change how sounds are triggered, such as by scaling the volume of the audio, or by changing the pitch, generally anything that might mean you need to update how the function is called, you'll need to go back and change every script that accesses the singleton too. This isn't necessarily a problem that's unique to singletons, however it is one of their common drawbacks. Generally, a singleton can be extremely useful at first, but can sometimes be difficult to change later, something that's especially true when using a player singleton. Player singletons can be used to expose data about the player object to other scripts in the game, such as their position or their health, which makes sense. After all, just about every other object in the game is probably going to respond to the actions of the player in some way, so making it easy for any script to do that seems like a good idea. At first. Because singletons are based on static variables, the general rule of thumb for statics applies to singletons as well, which is that you should only really make something static if there's only going to be one instance of it in your game. Again, this is because singleton references are direct, they're hard-coded into the scripts that use them, meaning that it's not typically possible to swap out a singleton for another of the same type. For example, let's say that you use a singleton to connect a health bar to your player's health value. This will work, 
and it'll be convenient. But because the scripts are essentially tightly connected, it could be extremely difficult to add a second player with a second health bar later on. This happens because the reference that the health bar uses is unique. It connects to the player, not a player. Meaning that if you want to add more, you're going to have to completely change how players are accessed, or change how health bars get their data. Which is why using a singleton for something that may not actually be one of a kind, such as a player, generally carries more risk than when using one for a global system. However, in both cases, thinking about what you might want to change in the future can help to avoid a lot of the problems that can sometimes be caused by using singletons now. So is it okay to use singletons in your project? Singletons don't really cause problems on their own. Instead, problems tend to occur when a singleton is used for something that it probably shouldn't be, just because it's convenient. And while there's no one right way to use a singleton or not, Understanding the risks and thinking ahead can help to avoid some of the issues that they can cause. For example, you may want to avoid player singletons if you think that you're going to add multiplayer later on. While a singleton that saves the game can cause an issue if two scripts try to use it at the same time. This is the cost of having something in your game that anything else can access. Convenience, but with added risk. Sometimes, however, a singleton is the right tool for the job such as for systems that need to be accessed by everything, but that also need to exist inside the scene, such as an audio manager, for example. So while singletons can be divisive and while they can be controversial, they can also be extremely useful. And so long as you consider the risks involved and what you might like to be able to change about your game in the future, there's no reason why you shouldn't use one. Now I want to hear from you. Are you using singletons in your game? Have they helped you, or have they made your project more difficult to work with? And what have you learned about using singletons in Unity that you know someone else will find helpful? Whatever it is, let me know by leaving a comment, like this video if you found it useful, and get subscribed for more videos from me. I'll see you next time.